Welcome to GRE. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. What's the state of the real estate market today and where are we headed next? I'm also going to tell you specifically about how you can make thousands of dollars on your next real estate buy, then a helpful tool for analyzing real estate deals today on Get Rich Education. Mid-South home buyers, with over two decades as the nation's highest rated turnkey provider, their empathetic property managers use your return on investment as their North Star. It's no wonder smart investors line up to get their completely renovated income properties like it's the newest iPhone. Headquartered in Memphis with their globally attractive cash flows, Mid-South has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and 4,000 houses renovated. There is zero markup on maintenance, let that sink in, and they average a 98.9% occupancy rate with an industry-leading three-and-a-half-year average renter term. Every home they offer you will have brand new components, a bumper-to-bumper one-year warranty, new 30-year roofs, and wait for it, a high-quality renter in an astounding price range, 100 to 150 k Get to know Mid-South. Enjoy cash flow from day one at MidSouthHomeBuyers.com. That's MidSouthHomeBuyers.com. GRE listeners can't stop talking about their service from Ridge Lending Group and MLS 42056. They've provided our tribe with more loans than anyone. They're truly a top lender for beginners and veterans. It's where I go to get my own loans for single-family rental property up to fourplexes. So start your pre-qualification and you can chat with President Chaley Ridge personally. They'll even deliver your custom plan for growing your real estate portfolio. Start at RidgeLendingGroup.com. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to GRE from Hollyoke, Massachusetts to Oak Ridge, Tennessee and across 188 nations worldwide. I'm Keith Weinhold and this is episode 435 of the GRE podcast. You know, a lot of people make predictions and then they don't follow up on their own forecasts. Well, 14 months ago, I published GRE's 2022 National Median Housing Price Appreciation Forecast in our newsletter and then right here on this show. You might remember that I predicted 9 to 10% home price appreciation for the year. So that would be for last year. So therefore, in late 2021, I forecast that 9 to 10% appreciation rate for 2022. Well, yes, we just recently got the number for last year. You know, real estate data moves slower than glaciers sometimes, but we've got that 2022 number from the NAR here. It came in at. 10.2 percent. That's something I'll link in the show notes for you. Yeah, so 10.2 percent. And my forecast a year and two months ago was between 9 and 10 percent. Well, how was I so close? I've been doing this stuff for a while. I evaluated the current direction of home prices and housing supply, new building permits, mortgage rates, demography, affordability, and more, and it probably took a little luck, too. And you know, rather than being some housing permable, at times, I have often underestimated the strength of the real estate market. You might remember that back in 2019, right here on this show, I remarked how real estate values were stable and hardly appreciating. And then at that time, it was around 2019, I said, you know, I don't see what's going to make real estate appreciation rates shoot higher. Well, then something happened that no one could foresee, the pandemic, the great black swan event of them all. And then on top of that, virtually no one realized that a pandemic would correlate with hotly appreciated housing prices either. That was a difficult connection for a lot of people to make. All right, well, with that in mind, so now let's look forward. What do I think about the future? What do I expect for the 2023 National Home Price Appreciation and perhaps even into 2024? I expect stable values. They will not rise or fall significantly. 
Well, why won't housing values rise fast? Why not higher than historic norms? That is because of affordability constraints. And then why won't housing values fall fast? That is due to supply constraints. And of course, real estate markets are local. I could probably say that every show, but I don't. So we avoid most high price coastal markets around here, which I call the volatile markets. And we focus on the cash flowing Midwest and South, which I call the stable markets. So really this stability underscores the fact that our core areas expect little price movement in the near future with the geographic regions that we focus on. So now let's open that up to the broader economy beyond real estate now. Last week, we learned that Q4 GDP still showed solid growth at 2.9%, and that beat almost everyone's expectations. It showed both high employment and high consumer spending. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Bring out these stars and stripes. Why not? This is better than expected economic news. And really, this trend just continues. I mean, what if the Fed even engineers their desired soft landing, quelling inflation without crashing the economy? <laughs> this has surely frustrated all those people saying that we would be in a recession by now. And as you know, I have never said any such thing, even debating a podcast guest last year that told me we're already in a recession. I'll tell you, recession predictions have become as common as learning that a politician has a stash of classified documents at their home. Some have even wrongly predicted this sort of meteor striking the dinosaurs extinct level of economic collapse by now. And you know, these headlines keep coming out because warning-like headlines have been shown to attract attention. And I do get that, but these melancholy headlines and clickbait, that stuff gets more attention than accuracy does. The latest tech layoffs, they are just going back to our employment levels of 6 to 12 months ago. That's really more of a spectacle than anything of significance for the broader economy. Now, I'm just having a little fun with this stars and stripes stuff. This sure does not mean that everything is grand. I mean, high inflation keeps debasing the quality of life for the lower and middle class. Unless you're a listener of this show where you bought real estate and you kind of got your escape hatch and you are benefiting by winning the inflation triple crown. It was reported in Bloomberg that 64% of U.S. consumers are living paycheck to paycheck. That's up from 61% a year ago. Either of those numbers are concerning. A labor shortage persists. The world's most powerful nation, the United States, it has galactic-sized debt. So it's still pretty easy to find problems, too. And we might enter a mild recession later this year. The Fed expects to keep shrinking the pace of their interest rate increases. And now, going forward, remember that a recession correlates closely with lower interest rates, not higher ones. A lot of people think that the last recession was in 2008. That's not true. It was in 2020. And recessions occur every five years on average, so we're surely going to have another one sometime. Recessions are merely a normal part of the business cycle. They come and go, just like business buzzwords like new normal, synergy, or calling a company a family. <laughs> These things come and go like buzzwords. Mortgage rates recently hit their lowest level in five months. This has seen an increase in housing purchase applications, but I don't really expect there to be a huge surge there anytime soon, although it could continue to increase as we get into the spring home buying season. So really, the summary is that the housing market has been highly volatile the last couple years. And barring some drastic black swan event, expect more calming and normalization in the housing market here this year and into the near future. Let me make you thousands of dollars on your next real estate purchase. Now, first of all, let's step back. Most people don't do anything that moves the financial meter in their life. They try to budget. Some people severely cut back. 
And for many people, 100% of their income comes from their active income. That means if they stopped working, their income would quickly stop flowing. I mean, can you imagine designing your entire life architecture and framework around that premise right there? And miserly tactics like smuggling home napkins from Chipotle or saving ketchup packets in the fridge, <laughs> that sort of stuff just keeps people miserable. So it's kind of sad, though. In a world of abundance, people get scared into scarcity. They're choosing to live suboptimally, and they're never going to get that lost time back. And then, other than that group of people, there's another group that sort of focus on big picture market forces, but they don't really act on them. And some of these big picture market forces people follow, this sort of borders on financial news and entertainment. Now, this is a little more worthwhile, and it can even give you some long term investing gains. For example, Fed Vice Chair Lael Brainerd, she didn't ease anyone's nerves when she recently said, that central bankers are, quote unquote, determined to stay the course until inflation is back at its 2% target. All right, well, that sort of thing, that signals more rate increases. And then finally, there is a group that you belong to, a group that builds real wealth. You can get actionable wins now. And there are few times in the real estate cycle that are more conducive to this than today. And really, it's this national trend that's emerged that I want you to be aware of. A lot of property providers, um, even that our in-house investment coach, Naresh, helps you with, they are commonly offering three big incentives in this market that's still really adjusting to higher mortgage interest rates, even though they've come down about 1% off their peak now. And understand how these three things, they help keep money in your pocket right now which is more important than getting, say, a discounted property price, all right? Because we got to remember that every $1,000 less in your mortgage balance, that's only $6 in a monthly payment saved at a 6% interest rate. So instead of that, use these three tactics to your advantage before they disappear. So you can ask for these deal sweeteners confidently when you deal with some providers or you can ask for them confidently through Naresh. So the three big seller incentives today are, first of all, a 2% seller closing cost incentive. All right, so for example, on a 200K income property that you're looking to add, this is $4,000 credited to you so that you can spend it like cash at the closing table if you so desire. You can even buy down your interest rate with this 2% seller closing cost credit incentive, if you so choose. And the second of three incentives that's becoming common in this market, and that probably won't last very long, is that some providers are offering you now one to two years of free property management right at the beginning. Think about how that increases your cash flow. And then many providers, they're willing to give you a long-term five to six property management fee thereafter, where eight to 10% is the market norm. And then the third common incentive in today's market is the rent guarantee. All right, so the first two incentives are ones that probably won't last long, but keep the rent guarantee request in your back pocket for the long term. Remember this long term. And during most any market cycle, you can request this from a turnkey type seller. So a rent guarantee, that means if when you buy the property, it still isn't occupied with a qualified tenant at that time, well, then the seller will pay the rent to you until the day this property is occupied. All right, but use a little care with that rent guarantee. You can imagine how an unscrupulous seller might be incentivized to just fill it with a tenant whose FICO score is lower than room temperature just so that that seller can stop paying rent to you. So therefore, if the seller must pay market rent during an initial vacancy period, you may want to approve the provider's chosen tenant first. Now, our providers are expected to have a higher standard than that. And no, you weren't getting those deal sweeteners in 2021 at the height of the pandemic-induced housing frenzy. So 
Let's review the three income property seller incentives today that have become increasingly common but should not last long term are number one, about 2% seller paid closing costs to you. The second one is free or reduced property management fees. And the third one, which is really the only one that you can ask about long term, is the rent guarantee. And you can start using these right away. Now, at GRE Marketplace, you don't need to use our coaching service, but a lot of you do because it's free. It's really important and helpful, I think, if it's your first purchase or your second purchase. And our coach, Naresh, is an expert at getting you these three incentives. So ask about them. You can do so at gremarketplace.com slash coach. Inflation is still at 6% plus. And that can either eat you alive or you can reverse that and make inflation work for you. So again, that's at GREMarketplace.com slash coach. President Biden rolls out a renter's bill of rights. The number of millionaire renters has tripled. Those full stories and more are in last week's Don't Quit Your Daydream letter that I sent to you. Tenants are paying more and staying longer. Per real page, now just looking at the apartment data, over the last 10 years, tenants in market rate apartments renewed their leases 55% of the time last year. Now, the year before it was over 56%, but other than 2021, apartment unit retention was the highest in the past 10 years just last year. Single family rental retention is even higher than that. So tenants are paying more and they are staying longer. I'm bringing you today's show from my makeshift studio in suburban Las Vegas, Nevada for the fourth week in a row. You know, some events in life make you drop everything so that you can be there. My family has been in need here as my brother's wife passed away last week. Yeah, all too young. So I'm talking about my sister-in-law here. She died of cancer at, well, about half the age of the average female life expectancy. And my late sister-in-law was a beautiful soul. She had a light and a positivity that you just won't find in most people. That's what I'll remember about Tamara. I'm just grateful that I can be here for this. More straight ahead. I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education. If you're looking to grow your passive income from real estate, pay attention. My Property Stats is a deal analysis tool developed by an active investor to cut the time it takes to analyze any deal by over 90%. For any real estate class, you can calculate the exact price to pay to hit your cash flow and IRR goals, build a world-class pro forma, calculate the most you should pay for a renovation, run multiple scenarios with a comparison tool, and more. My Property Stats is the all-in-one toolkit for real estate investors. That means more deals, more cash flow, and more returns. Go to mypropertystats.com slash GRE now and use the coupon code GRE to get 10% off your first year. That's just $90 a year for a tool that can save 10 hours per deal. No more spreadsheets, no more juggling multiple files. Use coupon code GRE to get 10% off at mypropertystats.com slash GRE. When you want the best real estate and finance info, the modern internet experience limits your free articles access and it's replete with paywalls and you get pop-ups and push notifications and cookies disclaimers. Ugh. At no other time in history has it been more vital to place nice, clean, free content in your hands that actually adds no hype value to your life. That's why this is the golden age of quality newsletters, and I write ours myself. It's got a dash of humor, and it is to the point. To get it, it couldn't be more simple. Just type up a text message with the letters G-R-E in the body and send it to the phone number 66866. And when you start the free newsletter, you'll also get my one-hour fast real estate course completely free. Subscribe to my Don't Quit Your Daydream newsletter and your mind will be wired for wealth, text GRE to 66866 
Text GRE to 66866. This is the Real Wealth Network's Kathy Fetke, and you are listening to the always valuable Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold. Today's guest is both quite young and a pretty experienced real estate investor at the same time by now. And I first learned about him a few years ago from Damian Lupo, friend of the show here, when he basically said, hey, this is someone that you really ought to meet in the real estate field. And he was here with us on the show a few years ago. He is the best-selling author of the book, Skip the Flip. In fact, that had so much success that he wrote a sequel, Skip the Flip 2. And one specialization of his is in the RV and boat storage real estate space. And I've come to know him to have a sharp eye for opportunities to value add property. So it's great to welcome back to GRE, Hayden Crabtree. Keith, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be here and chat with you. Talk to us about the state of the market and or the best real estate opportunities that you see today from your vantage point, because we've have really a bunch of pretty extreme metrics lately. We had high mortgage interest rates and higher prices, but we also have higher rents and, and high occupancy. So talk to us about the state of a market and where you might see opportunities, Hayden. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great question. Everybody wants to talk about the state of the market. I can't remember if the last time I was on it was before. I know it was around the time that the pandemic had hit. One thing that happened out of that in 2020 is a lot of big groups, you know, Wall Street type groups, family office type groups, is they all wanted to get into self-storage as an asset class because a lot of people see self-storage as a recession resistant asset and so many people were predicting the massive recession that was to follow you know in the summer and fall of 2020 that really never occurred as we all know it went the exact opposite direction but so much money went into the storage space that self-storage prices went to an all-time high. And I talk a lot about self-storage investments. I think it's the same for commercial, but you know that's specifically where I focus is in the self-storage and boat and RV storage sector. And what had come out of that bubble of a lot of people going in there is just extremely low cap rates, which resulted in extremely high prices and all-time demand. And it was really hard to buy. It was a great time to be a net seller. It was a really bad time to be a net buyer. But what I think I'm seeing right now in the market after, you know, we've gone through multiple, multiple Fed rate hikes, prime going all the way up to seven plus percent. Uh, right now, what I'm seeing in the market is a lot of sellers, a lot of property owners who have a note coming due. And I just got an LOI sign on a deal today where their note is actually overdue and they haven't changed it out yet. But they're looking and they're holding, you know, a four and a half, four and a quarter, five percent interest rate on their notes. And now it's time to refinance because they got three year balloons or whatever it was. And they're sitting here going, oh, my gosh, my deal doesn't cash flow at the now eight percent interest rate that they're offering me today. I need to get out of this deal. And I think that that's where a lot of opportunity is. I think it's no different than how a lot of people got in trouble inside of, you know, the 2008 is just not financing for the long term. So I think there's a lot of opportunity in the commercial space right now for buyers who who bought in 2020, 2021 at high prices, who got 12, 24 month, 36 month loans. Maybe it was an interest only loan. Maybe it was an amortizing loan. Maybe it was a loan that was interest only that rolled over to an amortization schedule. But those kind of property owners that currently their income supports their current loan, but it would not support a loan on the 8% interest. When they double their interest rate, it's not going to support it because a lot of the lenders that I'm talking to right now have raised their DSCR standards. I've heard 1.3 as a minimum, 1.35 as a minimum. And it's really hard to meet those unless you have added significant value to the property that you purchase. So a lot of people who bought these turnkey deals that cash flowed and met the DSCR requirements at the older interest rates, they're not going to do so the same today. And I think that's a really big space to be looking out for. Or, or kind of an opportunity to be looking out for really any commercial you know asset. I think the residential market is a little bit different, but that's what I'm seeing on the commercial side as an opportunity right now. 
you're helping solve these people's problem for them when they have short-term financing or balloon payments coming due. A balloon payment basically means you need to make the big lump sum payment for the balance of your mortgage loan. You need to sell that deal or refinance that deal before that happens because a lot of people don't have several hundred thousand dollars or several million dollars worth of cash sitting around. So you're solving that problem for them before that alarm blares on that balloon payment, basically. Tell us about how you're finding these deals. No hard feelings between all the brokers or agents listening to the show, but I'm a big proponent of off-market deals. I'll, I'll figure out who owns the property. I'll reach out to them, whether that's trying to find out their phone number and texting them, calling them, sending them a letter, trying to get creative. You know, I've heard of different people uh, getting really creative with some of the things they do to spark people's attention, but just finding ways to kind of stand out. You know, I, I just got a call off of a letter I sent. Uh, last week and it hit the guy's inbox, I guess, yesterday. And, you know, he said, I wasn't even thinking about selling, but now that you kind of mention it, my partner's getting older. I live out of t state. Uh, it would be great if you guys would end up selling this deal. And that's kind of a different situation. But what I have seen a lot of, you know, on the deals that I am seeing is financing problems. And that's a reason for selling. But there's a lot of motivation out there. You know, I mean, I think demographically, a lot of the real estate, commercial real estate assets are held by the older generation, held by the older generation, I should say. And, uh, you know, there's they're looking to retire. They're thinking a lot about retirement. I'm hearing very, very consistently about how does this sale impact my retirement, right? And I think that that's an opportunity in and of itself. But a lot of the deals, to answer your question, are off-market deals, trying to get in contact directly with the owner. You do analyze so many deals, ones that you end up putting into your portfolio and ones that you learn aren't worth it. And since you were last here, one important role that you've really filled in the industry is that a few years ago, you set out to build the world's best deal analyzer, helping everyday investors leverage some of your knowledge in analyzing all these deals and really helping people with a platform called My Property Stats. So tell us about what you're doing there, setting out to build the world's best deal analyzer. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. I am not a software guy by any sense of the means and never really did I want to be. But in 2020, when it was a good time to be a net seller, I sold some of my properties. I, I sold 11 self-storage facilities in five different states with seven different investors. And I got multiple, multiple offers. But really what I learned, because I was kind of the finance guy that put all these deals together, what I learned in that process is my investors want to know what kind of a return are they going to earn on the money that they gave me to invest for them. And I think that's a really fair question. And I sat down and put my head in a bunch of spreadsheets for months on months. And I'm like... I am a real estate investor so that I don't have to work in spreadsheets each and every single day. And right. I kind of saw this problem and looked around in the industry of like, okay, how are real estate investors tracking the performance of their investment? Because we have a lot, there's thousands of property management companies. There's so many different property management companies. There's probably 10 property management companies for every single different kind of real estate. But I looked around and I said, where is the investment analysis in the real estate world? And there's some big companies out there that are really focused around, you know, helping you raise money, but all of the, and, and then, you know, talk about what kind of returns your investors are earning, which was the goal. But I went out there and they're all for Wall Street companies. They're all for people with billion dollar portfolios. And the minimum ticket price I could find on any of these softwares, the minimum was $25,000 a year. Yeah. And, the max, and to get something what really solved your problem was at least $100,000 a year. And for most people, $100,000 a year isn't really a viable option because it would just completely kill a lot of your cash flow. And so- I kind of set out on this mission to where I wanted to build a platform where, you know, if you own stocks or mutual funds or whatever, you can log into your Charles Schwab app or Robinhood app or whatever you use. And you can instantly see, boom, here's my money. Here's how I've done this month. Here's how I've done this week. Here's what I've done in the last year. Here's how this investment's doing. And I really wanted to build something like that for real estate investors to help them understand, okay, great. Your property may be 100% occupied, but how is the $70,000 you put as a down payment on the property actually doing compared to the other options? So that was kind of the goal and mission of my property stats at the start it is to help real estate investors understand their current portfolio. But in that process, we had to go through and build a deal analysis tool. So I said, well, we might as well go ahead and put together this and launch this to help new real estate investors go through and say, okay, hey, I'm looking at the property at 123 Main Street. It's a duplex that rents for $1,400 each side. I can buy it for $150,000. How good of an investment is that? And so that's the deal analysis part that we put out. And personally, 
I think it's the best deal analyzer in the world. I've looked at a lot of different deal analyzers. We custom built this one to make it easy and flexible to analyze any kind of property, whether it's self-storage like I analyze, whether it's a single family house, whether it's a multifamily, whatever kind of property it is, you can analyze it. And there's a lot of cool things in there like due diligence Dropbox. You can keep all of your documents in one place. You can copy a link and you can share the deal with your lenders or partners immediately. And they get all the documents, they get all the numbers. So it's just a really cool platform that takes a lot of the headache out of dealing with spreadsheets, sending multiple emails back and forth. So that was on the deal analysis side. And then we went on and we actually built out the investment management platform, which is where you can put your properties in there. And it'll tell you, hey, you thought you were going to earn a 15% IRR on this property and you're actually at 27%. Congratulations, right? And it'll start to help you do those kinds of scenarios or really just seeing your portfolio so you can know and understand, hey, is the property over at 789 Sycamore a dog and you should really sell it and get your equity back and go put it in this other deal you're analyzing. So that was the goal of that platform. And again, I'm not you know a software guy by any means, but I just saw a problem in my own business and couldn't find anything that would solve it. And I thought other people were probably having the same problem. Yeah, both Andrea and I have interfaced with MyPropertyStats.com a fair bit. And we like that it does an awful lot of things for you. So for you as an investor, it basically helps you be better organized with your existing portfolio and then make more informed decisions in the future. And in fact, you can approach things with future buys and try to determine, all right, what's the most that I should possibly pay for this property to meet my cash flow and IRR goals? So imagine approaching something that way rather than looking at a property and then trying to make the numbers work and, and try to settle for a certain cash on cash return. Instead, enter your, for example, cash on cash return and then determine what's the most that you should possibly pay for this property and have that be your criteria approach that way. Yeah, that's a great point because I think that a lot of investors need to be goal driven and have fundamentals, right? We shouldn't just look at a deal, say to ourselves, feels like a good deal. We should say to ourselves instead as investors that, hey, I'm investing to earn a 10% cash on cash return or whatever your metrics are, right? I'm investing to triple my equity in five years or whatever your metrics as an investor are, you should invest to achieve those metrics. And for the most part, I would say 90% of deals have a price at which you can hit your goals. 10% of deals, for whatever reason, the income will just never cover the expenses. It'll never be a good deal for whatever reason. But the cool thing, we call it the perfect purchase price calculator. It's kind of going back to that one, two, three Main Street duplex example. If they're asking 150,000, you know, and you say, well, at 150,000, I'm only hitting a 3% cash on cash, whatever, you can go in, tell the system you want to earn a 10% cash on cash. Tell it to find your perfect price, go through it. It may tell you, you can pay $132,650 to hit your perfect price. And you go to yourself, well, I can make the offer. And if they accept it, I'll hit my goals. And if not, I'll go on to the next deal. So it really works in the way of kind of like a, a CRM for any salespeople out there where all of your deals are stored in one place, easy to access from any device. It's a cool platform. I'm in it every single day as an active real estate investor, both for looking at my existing portfolio and the new ones that I'm trying to buy. Yeah. So I kind of think of there being two main roles there. You have your investment manager, which is to help analyze your returns on properties that you already own. And then secondly, is your deal analyzer. That is for the potential buys that you might want to make and evaluate in the future. And like you said, that's not just for single family rental homes up to fourplexes that can help you analyze self-storage deals and raw land and a lot of other asset types. Yeah. And, and it's not just properties already existing. I analyze development deals. I analyze deals that I'm going to buy and do expansions on, value add deals. You can analyze all kinds of deals and all kinds of strategies inside of that and get a true apples to apples comparison for wherever it is that you're placing your money. Because at the end of the day, we're all just investors, right? A lot of us here are tied to real estate because we think that is the best investment. But I like to know for sure that I have $100,000 that I'm looking to put to work, is it going to work in the best possible format for me in this real estate deal? So I'm a big numbers guy. Even if you're not a big numbers guy, you still want to know that you're buying a deal with positive cash flow in my property stats can make it easy to make sure that you're buying a deal you know, that's going to be an asset rather than a liability. Real estate is such a fragmented and inefficient market from a lot of perspectives. For example, someone with a, a stock and mutual fund portfolio, maybe they can use an app like Robinhood to look on their phone and say, hey, I had a great day. I was up 1.2% today. Well, in real estate, it's more difficult to do that 
But this gets you closer to that. It helps you realize what your returns are. It might help you identify a lagging performer in your portfolio, whereas otherwise you wouldn't be able to do that. It really just helps you organize things all in one place. You can store all your contacts and contact information, even store all your warranties for a certain property in one place. And you know, hey, I could have used something like this in the past. I mean, I know my habits from when I was a real estate investor early on. If I would have a water heater replaced and I got the warranty card with it, I didn't pay much attention to it. I just threw it away because I didn't really know how to efficiently organize it. So this can just help mentally declutter your real estate investor life. Yeah. And that's really the goal, you know, whether it's uh, going through and mapping out all your different critical dates for properties you own, like, hey, when's my property tax due? When's my insurance renewing? Whether it's going through and storing your operating agreements for partnerships you have in the cloud. So you always have access to them. You always know where they are. Whether it's when you're going to sell a property, you say to yourself, well, I know I got a survey on there. The buyer's asking me for a survey. Let me go. And for me personally, I was spending an hour because I have four different emails, two different laptops. Laptops. I'd spend an hour going through all the different files, trying to find the survey, and it was just so inefficient. I think one of the great things about real estate investors is we're action takers. We're not, for the most part, very organized individuals. We're always, yes, that sounds great. Let's do it. Let's go forward and buy that deal. We're really bad at like sitting down, taking pictures of the receipt, storing them, creating a system and everything. And my property stats is just trying to bring you one step closer to that. So you can really focus on enjoying your being a real estate investor rather than dealing with all the headaches and frustrations that come with being a real estate investor. Because they're going to be there. The question is just how do you handle those? It's probably easier to handle and you'll have better, clear headspace and bandwidth when you are at least better organized. Yes, action-oriented real estate investors just want to plow through and sometimes leave a mess in their wake. If you're a new real estate investor, this can also help you learn the numbers somewhat. For new real estate investors, I think it is important for you to not rely on another piece of software to go ahead right from the beginning and help you analyze your deals. For example, to start out with, I think it's a good idea for you as a real estate investor to understand that your cash on cash return, which is a really important metric, is simply your annual cash flow divided by your cash invested. But once you have that one committed to memory and that's automatic, and then you're thinking, in those terms. Sure, take a piece of software like this to help figure that out for you and make some pretty charts and comparisons for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the basis of everything, particularly when we're talking about investing your money, you want to have a firm understanding of what everything means, right? Going and looking at IRRs, equity multiple, cash on cash, yield on cost, all of these different metrics is great. But if you don't understand what that data is telling you, then you might as well not even look at it. So I'm a big fan of learning what the metrics are, calculating yourself by hand. And then once you got a firm understanding on that, go into a, a solution that is scalable, that will reduce your time spent on actually getting deals done is critically important. I think for, you know, once you have the basis, one of the things that I really like about the platform that I haven't seen anywhere else is the ability to analyze multiple scenarios. So for example, you could go in and you could take that one, two, three main street duplex, fill it out on what you think the loans are, but then you could go and you could just say, Hey, let me just duplicate this real quick and analyze another scenario. What if I raise rents by 4% instead of the 2%, how does that impact my investment? What if I get the property management company X instead of property management company Y and how their different fee structures work, how's that going to impact my investment? So one of the things I really like about it, whether you're a beginner or whether you are on your hundredth rental property is the ability to really make the best decision possible. But again, you have to know how all the numbers work and what the data is telling you before you start to really look at that data. Well, you're certainly having some success with my property stats with almost 12,000 people that have now signed up for this. They're really getting some good value in their life. What else should we know about property stats and why so many people are signing up for it and finding it useful? I think it's a unique product. I I think that there's not a lot of people out there that kind of to my point earlier, a lot of the old school generation is starting to fade out, starting to sell their properties. And there's a lot more of the new generation of real estate investors, people who are 40 and under and understand the importance of knowing your data and and, and appreciate and value technology as a solution in their life to make their life easier, to make their life more scalable, to make their life more organized, whatever it is. I think that there's a, just a new wave and that's why it's really never been a priority. Again, there's a lot of softwares out there, but this is a new 
new software to the space just in terms of the portfolio management for the average everyday real estate investor, the, the main street real estate investors instead of the Wall Street real estate investors. I just wanted to build it in a way to where it's there for everybody, right? You know, the goal of my property stats is not to charge people tens of thousands of dollars a year. It's to help everybody, no matter where you're at in your journey. We really have three different packages and the package is really built for wherever you are in your journey from whether you're just starting out, just sign up. We have a package that's $29 a month, super affordable, and you get access to everything all the way up to the person who, you know, we have people with hundred million dollar portfolios on the platform, and scaling all the way up to them. And for those people, again, super economical. Other companies would try to charge $20,000, $30,000. For those people, we charge $250 a month. So we're here in a way to be somebody on your team helping you make more money, not somebody saying, hey, we helped you make $2, give us $1.70 of it, and you'll come out a little bit better, and we'll take all your money. So we're just building it for the everyday guy, and we want to make it as affordable as possible, no matter where you are in your journey. Well, yeah, this can be a real asset to you as a real estate investor to finally get some things organized. If you are growing your portfolio, you have plans to grow your portfolio and project and see where you want to go. And Hayden, I really thank you for developing this for the industry. And then in addition, for GRE followers, you've also done something special. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're happy to be partners with GRE. So for anybody who's listening to the show who wants to sign up, whether you are that person who has 100 rental properties or whether you're that person who's trying to buy their first rental property, you can go to mypropertystats.com slash GRE, sign up. And Keith here, my good friend, has given everybody a 10% discount on their sign up. So yeah, if you're interested at all, just want to go check the platform out. If you want to get a demo of it and see it, we've got people who certainly help you out. Or if you're just ready to dive in and give it a go, mypropertystats.com forward slash GRE. Give that a try. Use coupon code GRE over there. That gives you 10% off of your first year. Thanks so much for doing that for us, Hayden. It's been a valuable chat. Thanks so much for coming onto the show. Thanks for having me. What you've learned with what I discussed earlier about the state of the housing market today is that prices aren't expected to move much, mortgage rates remain lower than historic norms, housing supply is historically low, tenants are paying more and staying longer. In the broader economy, things are better than many expected, and there are three income property incentives that can save you thousands now, and two of them are not expected to last. Hey, coming up here on the GRE Podcast, a slew of shows that are educational and wealth building, or just ones that you'll find outright interesting, like the distinctions of New York City real estate. We're talking about things like air rights and co-ops and rent control and more. And although we don't expect to find cash flow there, we will dig into what makes Big Apple real estate interesting and different. If you've sought a deal analysis tool that can also help you organize your real estate investor life better, big thanks to Hayden Crabtree. Check out mypropertystats.com slash GRE. Use coupon code GRE for 10% off your first year. Until next week, I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.